Hi and welcome to another edition of Ask a Polly from mynewsfeed.com.au. Today we're in the beautiful scenic rim. We're on location in Bow Desert and our special guest today, the LNP's scenic rim MP, John Crousey. John, thanks for joining us. Yeah, morning, Scott, and thanks for coming out. Now, I want to ask you about your last name first up. <laughs> Crousey, Kraus. Uh, what's the origins of well, Crousey? Well, it's German in origin, mm -hmm. and uh, my family has always referred to it as Crousey. Crousey. Yeah, that's right. With um, a Z. Well, it's K-R-A-U-S-E, <laughs> but uh, people say Krause. Some people say Kraus. Yeah. When I was at school, people used to call me Krause and, and say, oh, it's a nickname, so it must have a Y on the end, and your name's actually Kraus. And I'm like, no, it's uh, Krause. But anyway, some people around Boone actually do say Kraus. Mm. Um, I don't mind. Kraus, Krause's all good. Oh, it's the Cruise or like. Cruise, that's a bit of a stretch. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it's, uh, it is German in origin. Yeah. yeah, well, from Germany to Australia, you get the Aussie flow going. Of course, you'll that's have right. a Krause kind of thing to it all. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know the land, don't you? you? Your family upbringing has been around farms, hasn't it? Yeah, we have. Um, my, I grew up on a dairy farm mm -hmm. and at Marbu, which is out near Ipswich, and spent pretty much the first 20 years of my life there. And uh, that was a good experience. Uh, milking cows, cleaning all the rubbish out of the bales every day, <laughs> uh, especially during school holidays. Good, clean, dirty fun. Well, it was, yeah. <laughs> but you also learn how to work because it was a family farm and there was always plenty of jobs to do for us children. And I, I'm one of four boys. So Dad had plenty of help on the farm, that's for sure. Mum was a teacher. Yeah. Um, but the upbringing on the farm is a really great experience. And uh, I'm not a farmer myself, um, but it's, I'm glad that I had that experience in my yeah. early days. Yeah. Well, and, and, and in this job, so important because um, we have uh, some great farmers in our region and agriculture is a huge part of the local economy. And of course that farm upbringing has helped um, in your political life, hasn't it? Well, it gives you uh, an edge. appreciation for the hard work that goes into growing our food mm. uh, and in making a living on the land as well. It's not easy. Mm. I mean, it's a very unpredictable business, whether it's droughts or floods. You don't know which one you're going to get each year and then you throw fire into the mix every now and then as, as well. And some parts of the country, mice. Well, I know. I mean, see what's happening down Western New South Wales. And mm. we've had a few mice around our place as well in Boona, but nothing like it has been uh, down south. And uh, I couldn't believe it a few weeks ago when we had the uh, group called PETA uh, yeah. <laughs> come out and say, farmers should be considering the welfare of the mice when they're literally <laughs> being overrun in their oh. lounge rooms by the little critters. Yeah. And uh, I think that shows uh, a little bit of uh, out of touchness from, from that group. Um, obviously it's a huge imposition on farmers and affects their profitability, affects their crops, but it also affects their, their lives in their house mm. and possibly their health as well. So what made you decide to leave the farm and uh, become a politician? Well, I, I left school and, and I ended up doing going to university in Brisbane. Um, my dad, as I said, he was a dairy farmer and I think he saw what was coming in the dairy industry and so encouraged us to uh, go to, to, to do well at school and to go into further education as well. Mm. Um, so I did that and then uh, ended up working uh, as a solicitor uh, in Brisbane. Did a little bit of time overseas uh, as well, which was a great experience to learn how things are done in a different country. But it also gives an appreciation of how lucky we are here mm. in Australia with um, both the freedom that we have, the clean air that we have and the um, terrific society that we have. The um, egalitarian nature of Australia is, is unique amongst, around the world. I have no doubt about that. And seeing how other people live and, and how their societies work firsthand really um, you know, cemented that view that we need to protect that mm. and work for a place where everyone can, if they work hard, uh, get ahead in life and build a future for their family. Um, so, uh, long answer to a short question, I know, um, but I'd always had an interest in, in politics, uh, all growing up through the family life, and uh, mum and dad took an interest in politics, so did my grandfather, and uh, it had always been something that I thought one day I might have a go at that. You mentioned before that we are the lucky country, and we are, we are the lucky country, Indeed. and you've been lucky in love as well. 
Tell me a little <laughs> bit about your uh, your lady, your lovely wife. Oh, I'm married to Kit, and uh, we are uh, blessed to have three great sons. All boys. Yeah, we, all yes, boys. That's okay. Right. Yeah, we were, and I was one of four boys as well. So there's something going on in the family there. Yeah. Um, and uh, Kit and I met uh, in Brisbane when we were both working there, just out of university, and. Uh, as luck would have it, uh, we got on well. and <laughs> That's always a good start in a relationship. And we're married uh, in 2007, actually, nearby at Tamaruka. Now, poor kid. Uh, to be outnumbered in the house by, <laughs> by three, three kids and yourself. I mean, what is it like in the house at night? I mean, who rules the roost? Well, the boys, uh, obviously, they take a bit of corralling along <laughs> the right path because uh, they're, they're quite young still. and. Uh, you know what young boys are like, they can be a bit rowdy. Um, but around uh, dinner time, we um, obviously have to uh, feed them all because mm -hmm. they're growing up fast. One of them is nearly 10. And uh, you know what happens at that time of life, growth spurts happen. But yes. it is a, it's a great experience and uh, I really appreciate the support that she's given me in doing this job because uh, part of being in public life and, and doing this job is uneven hours and unpredictable mm. um, appointments sometimes. It's not the type of job where you can say every night you're going to be home at sort of six o'clock or seven o'clock or anything like that. Um, besides having parliamentary sitting weeks where you're away for a few days at a time, there's a lot of community events that uh, you go to and that's all part and parcel of staying in touch with the community. and. You go to those events and uh, people come up to you and, and raise issues that if you're not there, they wouldn't get in contact with you. But because you're there and can have a chat to them, uh, you find out what's going on in the community. It makes a difference, that one-on-one -on -one connection. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And you're going to be happy you're in state politics, not federal politics at the <laughs> moment, with the spill going on in Canberra earlier this week. And uh, how do you respond to something like that? To well, look, there's... Uh, it would take an enormous impact on your, on yeah. your family life, I believe, um, working as a federal parliamentarian. Mm. Um, but also, uh, I think, from my perspective, I love representing the community I represent. There's 38,000 electors uh, across a fairly diverse area. The thing with federal um, parliamentarians is they represent an enormous amount of people, over 100,000, a lot of them. And so, staying in touch with each of them or each section of them yeah. becomes a lot more difficult and uh, I really appreciate the fact that in all of the communities I represent from Beachmont to Grantchester you can actually get in and, and be uh, abreast of all the issues um, in those communities which I think would be a bit harder in federal politics. <laughs> now your career, you touched on being a solicitor uh, earlier. Uh, what made you decide, oh, maybe the legal eagle's not the, the way to go? Uh, but what did you do? Where were you? Oh, so I worked primarily uh, in finance, mm. so um, and not in suing people and getting money back from them, <laughs> but rather getting money out the door to help business grow. And uh, the last job I had was with a big bank here in Australia, NAB, mm -hmm. and did a lot of work in agribusiness, in property business as well and also um, self-managed super funds for, for people who were trying to, to grow their superannuation uh, uh, assets through borrowing. And that was a good job. It gave me a great insight into how businesses work and lots of different businesses because the thing with banks is, and banks cop a, 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 a lot of flax sometimes mm. and some of that is quite justified, but they always look into how businesses work. and so. Uh, lending money to people it gives, gives me a great insight into how business works. I guess also with the farming background that you had, you were able to That's right. expound on the agricultural no, side. Nice, and that was a, that was a good job. Um, but I'd always had a, uh, a passion for politics. Mm. Um, I got involved in the youth um, wing of the LNP when I was at university and I just decided uh, when the uh, opportunity arose one day I would uh, have a go. And so um, a few years later, that opportunity came up yeah. and I decided to uh, put my hand up to represent our community. Success story. And all you did was have a go. Well, look, there is something to be said for that. Um, and for people to, who have a passion and who want to uh, have certain goals in life, sometimes uh, you do have to take a bit of a chance and have a go, whether it's in business, uh, whether it's in going down a particular educational path, or whether it's in having a go in representing your community.
community. So um, I'm very glad that the people in Bodeza electorate to start with and now Senior Criminal Electorate have been able to support me uh, on a number of occasions now and uh, I'll keep working towards gaining their support into the future as well. All right, it's the weekend. The boys are out of the house, all right? It's just you and your lovely lady. What's your poison? Beer, wine? I do, I don't mind a beer. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, but also uh, a good uh, Queensland red. Of course. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, Kit's also quite partial to the South Australian uh, mm -hmm. wines, so. But, uh, I mean, you can't go past a, uh, a Forex, can you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Queenslander. Forex, Forex yeah. Queenslander, there we go. Got some of them in the fridge at the moment. <laughs> uh, what about uh, television or, or the movies? Do you have a favourite uh, flick or a favourite show that you binge watch? Well, this is going to sound a bit old, uh, I guess, to show my age, but one of the, my favourite movies of all time is Top Gun. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who... When You're you waiting know, for the remake, aren't you? Aren't you? Well, actually, we are. <laughs> yeah. um, but... You, when you grow up in the 80s, and uh, that was a, an iconic film, mm -hmm. and uh, that was certainly one of my favourites of all time. I must have watched it you know, 30 or 40 times by now. You feel the need. <laughs> the need for speed, don't you? <laughs> um, but uh, certainly Game of Thrones was uh, one of the favourites for me. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, definitely. That's going from in, one in extreme to the other. I know, but uh, <laughs> it, it took a while to warm up on me, but I really enjoyed it in the end. Oh, good yeah. on you. Yeah. Well, we've got some questions from sure. some of your uh, locals in the electorate. Let's go through some of them. They've written into mynewsfeed.com.au with some questions for you. This is from Rob of Boona. What can you do to stop this money grab? The solar tax must be stopped. Yes, and... Uh, Rob also had a reference there to a news article uh, from uh, Perth Now, which is talking about a so-called solar tax proposed in New South Wales. Mm -hmm. So good news for Rob is that uh, nothing like that is proposed in Queensland at this time, as far as I'm aware. Uh, in, in fact, in that article, the Queensland government um, said they weren't looking at that. But the issue of affordable and reliable power is one that I've um, campaigned for for many years now because for a lot of our businesses, and particularly our farming businesses, uh, irrigation, uh, sorry, electricity is a huge issue for them. It's one of their major costs. And so we need to always ensure there's a reliable source of power, but also an affordable source yes. of power. And uh, it's uh, the issue with solar power, and if I could just say this, is that um, the feeding power into the network through solar panels uh, does something through the, the wires uh, which they weren't initially designed for. Um, they were designed to send power out. Into, to go one way. To go one way. And so sending power back along them, uh, I believe does create some technical difficulties, uh, which needs to be monitored all the time. And uh, I think the, the authorities are doing that. Um, there is a place definitely for solar, pan, uh, sol solar power and other renewable power, uh, but we also need to be sure we have the right equipment mm. to deal with that. As, as it comes about. Okay. And uh, ensuring affordable, reliable power, especially for our farmers and small businesses, is key, because that, that's what makes uh, businesses work. Okay, so finding that balance. That's right. Okay. Next question from Kevin in uh, Glen Eagle, who oh, yes. asks, my, why, why, um, my wife and I are pensioners. It costs about 20 bucks by taxi to go into Bow Desert, but we first have to call the national number. And they keep getting us confused with Glen Eagle in Western Australia. <laughs> I hate to think of the, the cab fare for that. <laughs> uh, can't we go back to a local taxi service and can the fare be any cheaper? Sure, well, Kevin, I'm sorry to hear that uh, whichever cab company is, uh, gets you confused with Glen Eagle in Western Australia and that's something uh, we might be able to take up on your behalf to get their system fixed up. But the good news around Bow Desert is that there are there is a local a transport provider called Scenic Services, Green Frog, which does uh, transport people around the Bow Desert Township for around about $10 one way. I had a talk with them just before uh, coming to talk to Scott this morning, yeah. and they'd be more than willing to help you out, uh, Kevin. The issue of, of taxi access is, is an important one though, because uh, from time to time people do need to get a, a taxi service, mm -hmm. um, quite apart from the local um, small business offering and uh, it can take quite a while for for a, a vehicle to get down here whether they're coming from Jimboomba or further beyond so 
that's that's a, an issue that um, will be ongoing uh, until there's uh, a greater demand, I think, through having more people here. Mm. And I think uh, supporting our local businesses, as I said, the scenic services and the Green Frog will enable them to actually grow their offering. And I know that they've been looking into getting different types of vehicles uh, so they can take more people uh, yeah. further away. Oh, excellent. So some good news there for um, Kevin of Glen Eagle uh, locally, not in Western Australia, obviously. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right, the next question is from a property holder in the scenic room, obviously hasn't given their name. I do my bit in the fight with fire ants, and I know this is very near and dear to, to you, yeah. but it seems other regions are get, getting preferential treatment. I can't be expected to, to just, uh, uh, if I have, oh, this is a bit wobbly, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be expected, I guess you're saying, to just do it myself and then wait so long for some authority figure to take the time yeah. to inspect while other regions get someone immediately. What can be done about that? And Scott, this is a really big concern for me and for a lot of people and there's some media about this today. Fire ants are a uh, program mm. as a bus. And, and that's um, something that I've been, I've been a thorn in the side of the government about this issue um, for quite a while. And the one of the main issues I've had is that it takes too long for uh, fire ant officers to respond to people when they report fire ants. Uh, years, uh, a few years back, it, I had reports that it was taking somewhere between uh, five to eight weeks sometimes mm. between the initial report to getting treatment on the property. And the Queensland Ombudsman actually had a look at this and uh, found cases of, uh, of it taking more than 40 days. Uh, for responses to to occur, so but then so much damage could be done by then. Well, and that, and that can spread in that yeah. time as well. So I've always I've been quite critical of the program um, for not having enough urgency uh, when reports are made to get out there and treat the ants mm. so that they can't spread further. And I will continue to do that. Um, there are other issues as well in terms of uh, right now the government and the, and the program is pushing the onus onto landholders to actually do the baiting and the treatment themselves. Now that's not a bad idea in itself, except for the fact that this program has been given about $400 million uh, by the uh, government and by other governments around Australia to do that job. Mm. So if they've been given that money, why are they pushing that responsibility onto landholders themselves? And you can hear the frustration uh, from that property holder. And, and I, I completely understand that. I, uh, I think the program is failing, I'll, I'll say that, because the fire ants keep spreading into areas where they haven't been before. And uh, it's an eradication program, and if they keep spreading, and they're, all, and, they're, and they're still in areas where they have been, well, it's not really working, is it? No, so the execution of the program right. needs development. Needs I, I think, firstly, they need to admit that it's not working, and then go back uh, with an open mind, with a full review, uh, to make it work better for people, including Kevin, uh, so that they can get uh, their fire ants attended to mm. and exterminated in a timely manner. Um, I've asked the Auditor General a couple times now to go through the program uh, to review it. That hasn't happened yet, but uh, I make the call again today. There you go. Hopefully you've got the Auditor General watching my news feed and uh, we can send them the link. Can pick up this, uh, <laughs> this call. Okay. Our next question is from John Bedezet, and uh, oh boy, transportation. He gets right into it. Public transport sucks. <laughs> that's, that's from John. Uh, can we get a train from Bedezet to Brisbane, or at least to Bean Lee? Can that be a priority? It's well, very hilly, isn't it? That's, look, there is a few hills around, but John Mac raises a good point because uh, there was a train line from Bedezet to uh, Brisbane for quite a while. Um, through up through Bethania and that stopped quite a few years ago now from a passenger point of view but there is uh, uh, planning and being put in place to for the Salisbury to Bad as a uh, rail corridor mm -hmm. uh, 20 million dollars has been allocated by the Commonwealth and the state to build that plan and uh, unfortunately it's still some way off in the horizon but in the meantime uh, there is uh, bus services between Bow Desert and Browns Plains. Now when I came to office um, it's a little while ago now but in 2012 there are only three buses a day going out of Bow Desert. 
Uh, now there's, I think, nine, 10, maybe even 11 or 12 going out almost on the hour um, during the week. And that came about in 2013 uh, when we were in government. And uh, there, there was a recognition that we did need to have more connections. So that's an improvement. I acknowledge it's not ideal. Um, and one of the things I've been arguing for is that we need to have some direct services from Bodesert to the city. So you don't have to change the bus at Browns Plains to, to go wherever you want to go. And I think having those uh, in the morning and in the afternoon, especially if you're working or studying uh, up in Brisbane, it would make a big difference to, uh, to how people use public transport. So um, I, I, there is work underway on the train uh, question. Uh, it's still some years off, but these things uh, do take some time to, to, uh, to, to work up and they will be also building a new section of line uh, from Wood Hill thereabouts into Bow Desert. A so, standalone section yeah, of line. Yeah, that's right, which will then uh, move into the existing interstate railway line uh, uh, somewhere up near Kangaroo. Okay. Yeah. Um, we've seen the, the uh, Desert Police Station in, in its uh, glory. It's relocated uh, at the moment for uh, bigger and bigger, better premises. Uh, around the corner from here, but uh, Joe asks the question, why is money being spent on the police station, but no money on the PCYC? And that's a fair question too, Joe. Um, the reality is uh, we do need both of those facilities and I've been lobbying hard for a PCYC. Yes. And there's actually a huge amount of community support for a PCYC to come to vote, is it? And uh, I'm hopeful that in the next um, short period uh, we will see some really well, great is, progress on that. There is a lot of support for it in the local community, the local sports clubs are yes. right behind it as well. The local Yourself, police. Yes, everybody's involved in it, we just need to make it happen. Well and the good thing is PCYC Queensland who operates PCYCs, PCYCs, they're actually very supportive as well. Now it's not a done deal yet but the community has been uh, urged to fill out a survey Okay. Uh, which is the Scenic Rim PCYC Community Engagement Survey. Because what PCYC Queensland needs to know is that the community is fully behind this, this uh, option for the town. And I encourage everyone to fill out the survey and to tell PCYC Queensland exactly why we need the facility. And there are a range of great reasons, particularly for uh, indoor public sporting facilities to offer uh, youth engagement uh, initiatives through the PCYC, and they've got a long history of doing that, and we really need that in this town. But also to create a meeting place for the public, uh, especially uh, in emergency uh, times during floods or fires, somewhere we can, where we can congregate and, and uh, coordinate all the emergency services. So there could be many facets to why we need a PCYC. Um, and I guess to Joe's question about why money's going to the police station is, the, the police station has had a very long, uh, his, a very long, uh, been a very long time coming. Uh, the first call for replacement of, of the police station was made probably in about 2004, um, because it was built around 1980 when there were six police officers in Bodesert. Yeah. Now there's over 20, and it was completely unfit for purpose. So I'm really glad that we are actually mm. getting it. It's building for the future. Uh, it was completely necessary um, to support our community but so is a PCYC so it's not a question of one or the other it's just that we have the funding for the police station uh, which is a great outcome now we need to go after funding and getting the PCYC here as well it's not one or the other we need to shoot for both fair enough okay so a lot of great issues oh absolutely lots of grassroots support with grassroots issues happening in your community you're ready for a bit of fun <laughs> okay. This is nothing like what David Crisofuli went through, um, so <laughs> don't think there's any of a stitch up in, uh, in these questions, but we're going to do the Fast Five right <laughs> now. So I'm basically going to give a one or two word um, exclamation and you've just got to think hard very quickly. Okay. What is your response? So I'll give you an example. If I said uh, Brisbane Broncos, what do you think of first up? Got my ladder. <laughs> okay, a nice letter, of course. Okay, you ready for this? Sure. This is the Fast Five, bit of fun with uh, the Fast Five. Okay, first up, if I said Ipswich. Grammar. Logan City. 
Chimboomba. Dairy farms. Cow. The Olympics. Gold. And Pauline Hansen. One Nation. Okay, fair enough. That's all we can ask. Just, just a bit of fun for the uh, end of the interview. Thank you for your time today, and thank you so, so much for uh, joining us this morning oh, my with pleasure. Ask a Polly from mynewsfeed.com.au.